And as you see there, six foot five to five foot 11 inch reach uh, height advantage, big reach advantage for Sol Dakers too. I think he's probably just on first view, got a little bit more snap and spike behind his shots than, than Joe Joyce. I don't yeah. think the engine is quite what Joe's is either, but that's not saying too much. No, <laughs> I don't think there's many to one engine like Joe, to be no, fair. I don't think there is. Um, you know, it, it, it reminds me of one of those old fashioned locomotives that just get as better as the rounds go on. He's, yeah. They keep throwing coal on him in between the rounds and he just keeps going and going. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, if he's got a chin like Joe Joyce, he's definitely got a future. Yeah. Adam Booth also told me an interesting thing about Joe Joyce as well. He said his grip strength is absolutely unbelievable. He said he could literally crush a watermelon. He said that Adam, when Ooh. he used to tape his hands, he would literally, he couldn't tape them tight enough. Because wow. his grip <laughs> strength is so strong. Yeah, some athlete, Joe Joyce. I tell you, while you guys were crushing watermelons, the Bulgarian did manage to uh, land a right hand over the top, but uh, Dakers took it very well. He's prepared to have a go here, Mladef, and he's forced Dakers to hold momentarily there as well. He's fought at a high calibre as well, so, you know, he won't be overly scared here, I wouldn't imagine. I think he's got a cut on the forehead as well. There's the kind of stuff you want to see. Um, you know, going to the head, switching back to the body real quick, you know, getting a reaction. Hoping that Manev brings the hands up so he can switch to the body. Yeah. Yeah, as he, as he just comes in there, that, that one-two left hook to the head, you just like to see that left hook to the body, wouldn't you? Just sink yeah. it in. Little touch jabs upstairs just to make sure that guard's closed and then go downstairs. Exactly. He's not, exactly. he's not yeah. doing badly at all. And it, no, listen, it's not. It, it is difficult when someone's decided that survival mode is, is all they're going to do. But Right there, a little flurry. I was going to say, Manef needs to show us something here, otherwise he's going to be calling the referee in. And I think uh, the instincts kicked in there for him, but uh, I'm sure he'll just get behind that big shield again. But again, the good body work comes in from Dakers. And he gets some success with that right hook round the back of the guard as well. I tell you, whatever they're paying, Vladin Manev, he's earned every penny of it tonight. Yeah, he certainly has. He certainly has. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, that's like the old racehorse knows that the stable door just opened and he, he can get home to for the hay here, Manev. But yeah, it was Dakers that finished on top. And that will be a successful debut for him, and one he'll remember. And Vladin Manev has certainly pushed him all the way with his resilience and his courage but uh, no doubt about whose arms getting raised at the end of this one ladies and gentlemen after six rounds here in manchester england we go to referee john latham's scorecard it reads 60 to 54 for your winner solomon real deal dakers He's the uh, younger man in there by several years. There's not a great deal to decide between them in terms of height and reach. That's not going to be a determining factor in this fight, though. See that, that right hand to the body? It's very, very intelligent, that. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he's getting through the guard of Appleyard here in yeah. this third round. Well, that, that good, hard, straight right hand to the body he's been using is, is a very draining punch as well. You know, Appleyard's hands will start to come down, you know. Well, it's happening in this round. Those yeah. jabs are just ripping through. And so much can come off that jab. Trying to bring the uppercut into play there, and then does land the right hand. He just saw it in time to just twist away there, Appleyard, but he still felt it. I tell you, if that landed flush, we might be uh, closing the book on this one. Oh, the way he turns the wrist over and, and everything, yeah. just right on the, the, the point of the extension of the punch. It's very accurate, it. wasn't it? Yeah, beautiful. Oh, this is really nice. That jab just kept Appleyard there we go again as well, yeah. And I'll tell you what, Appleyard's defences are starting to unravel, and that was a terrific round for Dalton Smith, and it was very worrying for Steffi Bull and Lee Appleyard. This is going to turn into a one-sided a bit of one side to beat in if Appleyard right. doesn't start to try and push forward a little bit now. Why aren't you stepping out? Yeah, he's trying to draw something as well. Flicking something out there to get something back, but Appleyard smartly just yeah, steps off the there. Yeah. <laughs> but then he gets caught with a combination and 
I think he wasn't expecting that last left hand coming around the back of the guard. He's so quick with his counters, he's so that accurate, left. and Appleyard's in trouble here. He's, he's marked his eye up as well, and quite badly with that left hook. Well, if he didn't learn the lesson before, he surely must learn it now, Lee Appleyard. He can't stick around on the ropes or in the corner. He's going to be opened up. Good body shot there from Smith. I tell you, Smith is really picking some wicked shots here. Yeah. I'm going, to call it, I'm going to call it now. I'd be very surprised if, if Appleyard doesn't go over whether Steffi Ball doesn't pull him out at some point in the next two or three rounds because he's just taking too many clean. He's getting stuck on the ropes and he's a hurtful shots from Dalton Smith. It's just very, very one-sided indeed and Smith he's absolutely not blowing ruthless. Out no, guy, no, 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 he he's can not just, blowing he, he can just walk around there, he can drop the gloves. He's in complete control. I mean, it's, it's actually... Beautiful to watch in one sense and absolutely horrible to watch in another. Yeah, yeah. enough's enough. There you go. Well, thank you, Mark Lyson. Well, Dalton Smith, you can see what the fuss is about. You really can. And yeah. I, think, I think there's relief all round that uh, the referee stepped in there, you know. He's very, very good. Not a great deal to pick between them size-wise. That's yep. probably not going to be the defining characteristic here. What will be more telling is potentially the kind of foot speed and hand speed of Tommy yes. McCarthy. Yep. I'd like to see something coming back from Jure. Yeah. His corner will ask him to drop a, drop a jab to the body and come back over the top with the right hand. He, he did try it to no avail. And... Well, we've, we've seen it in early rounds. He's been he's been sending in those jabs to the body, yeah. but there's been nothing following up from it. Yeah. He's been backed up quite easily yeah. as well. I'm quite surprised at that. Been outworked. Yeah. I thought he would probably try and surge forward but behind the high guard and maybe land something over the top of Tommy McCarthy's jab, but he's uh, he's been pushed back quite easily. Yeah, and whether that's because he's giving up ground or just because, you know, we're seeing a slightly more new physical McCarthy who's holding centre ring better because McCarthy against Turkey and for, for long periods of the fight against Lagoon is having to box on the back foot, dance yeah. and move. So it's yeah. good to see him show a different side to his game. He said that was what he was going to do and it's what he is doing at the moment and he looks good doing it too. Yep, looks good so far. Well, he is slowly but surely just knocking the ambition out of uh, Alexandre Jure. I think with a guy that is so keen to just keep the distance here, he's just got to take that little extra oh, half good a body shot. Oh. It's the body shot that gets there. Good yeah. shot, Chris. That was a great shot, wasn't it? Absolutely fantastic. And on the move, too, Jura was moving backwards, which you would think would take the sting out of the shot. But, well, Tommy McCarthy said he's going to be sitting down on the shots more. You can hear the power of them. And now he's going to go to work with 16 seconds on the clock. Oh, there's a good right hand underneath the, the left elbow as well. Well, Jure has come to life now in these last 16 seconds as well. Needed a response, but he was really hurt there. Did well to get up. As he you felt say, that one, Nick. He yeah, felt he did. that one. It was, and as you say, he was backing away from it as well, and it still did enough damage to put him on the floor. Yeah, and that amateur background too, that kind of classic two-phase attack, especially if you know your opponent's okay, imperative right. is to try and close that gap down, as you say, just touch him with a jab, little lay back, keep that oh, space. Oh, body oh, shot. Him again. I've seen the gap there for that body shot. I knew it was going to come out. <laughs> well, does he get up from this one? I'm not sure he does, you know. He's done. It's over. He's done. All over. Suddenly, it was that left hand to the body, out of nothing. All he needed was to just get the range right. Now that is European title successfully defended, and uh, Alexandru Jure, who got up first time, couldn't get up again. Again, those uh, heights, I think, are probably a little bit uh, underrepresentative of what we'll see there. Cunningham about five foot nine, and Yafai maybe five foot five, and that will be evident in the ring. Tall southpaw against a short, compact, heavy punching orthodox fighter. They do have a point to an extent. Yafai is suddenly sometimes guilty of just loading up on his shots a little bit and uh, instead of just letting them flow, getting the feet into range. And I think they had counted on that, but those heavy singles as they start to land, as he does get a bit closer, like that right hand to the body, they will start to take the steam out of Cunningham. Oh, lovely left hand counter, though. Yeah, lovely and sharp. Eh? It's a very good start from Cunningham. Yeah, really he's, uh, he's landed some lovely counter punches as well on the back foot. 
So his movement's very, very good. Yeah. He's just made a mess. Five I mean, was, body shots there, Chris. That was. That Did was you see that? There? That's awful great. from the fire. I mean, he, he looks so bad there. He needs to settle down. Spencer McCracken, I'm sure, will have some words with him when he sits down. Just calm things down a little bit. This is. Uh, but that was lovely evasive action there, yeah. Nick. From but he's loading up again. I mean, he's telegraphing yeah. the shots, Alex. He just needs to try and settle himself down here, the champion. So he is trying to force this, and Cunningham is cute and clever. I mean, a tall southpaw, you, I mean, again, you, you mentioned it, the head movement, it's just non-existent, that backhand straight down the line for Cunningham, can't miss. No, so it's a big concern, if you're going to be marching forwards, you, you've got to be taking your head off centre line, changing the level, offering yeah. something, you can't just march forward and, and, and give him a free shot, it's... Uh, no, you certainly can't. Crazy. Oh, and he's got him again! And Gamalia Fai's bad night has just taken a turn for the worse. He's been put on the floor by Jason Cunningham in the second round. And he really does need to get his head together because this has been an awful start for him. Cunningham wow. really giving him a lesson at the moment. He doesn't need to be a puncher, Cunningham, when he's he's got the, the momentum of Yafai walking straight yeah. onto these shots yeah. and he's getting yeah. a free target because the head's staying still. It's perfect southpaw boxing here it's against absolutely. an aggressive boxer. Yeah, so just a little momentum shift, isn't there, at this point? And uh, I think Cunningham will have sensed it as well as Yafai. Just a little bit more urgency in the movement of Cunningham. That doesn't look quite as relaxed. Knows he's been a little bit buzzed there and that Yafai can get to him. And those body shots sinking yeah. in where they weren't before. Yeah, that's going to be a big, big part of this for Gamal Yafai if he can consistently land to the body. I mean, the counters will be there for Cunningham. That's for sure. Oh, there it is again. Right, he gets the like that. That's what we said. We said he's going to have to get a knockdown. He's going to have to stop him in his tracks. He looks more buzzed there than yeah, he did the he first does. time. Yeah, he does. Definitely does, yeah. Oh, he's walked onto another one. And that's the point. They're there for him. The, the head movement is non existent from Gamal Yafai. Yep. You picked that up earlier, Alex. And, yep. and, and Cunningham is able to exploit that. He's not a big puncher, Jason Cunningham, but he's put him down twice now. Yep. Reaching in there as well, Gamal Yafai. You know, but like Chris said, you know, the power is he's, he's coming in with his full body weight. He's walking into the shots. It doubles the impact almost. But you still, I still just get the feeling that Yafai is at one point going to like walk through him. I don't know why. He's just. Seems so much more powerful than Cunningham, even though he's getting dropped and outboxed. Just staying safe, sensible, smart here. Cunningham again as another huge miss with the left hand. Oh, that's a hard right hand to the body from your fight there. It's the body shots. If he's going to get a dent here in Jason Cunningham, it's got to be from the body shots. Yep. But then oh, he's caught again, another left hand, and your fight down again. For the third time, he springs straight back up again, but. I mean, he, really he's giving funny. himself no chance here, is he? He, no. Well, I say, don't be surprised if he drops him again. You know, don't be surprised. He's, he could he's be getting, he could be getting stopped here. You know, a long time in the round two, Nick. You know. Yeah. He's rallied. He's gritted his teeth as Cunningham again came in, and I tell you what, if Cunningham had a dig, this might be over already. But I don't know how much he's got left in the tank. He's wasted so much energy, Kamal Yafai. Every time he walks on and exposes himself, he gets clipped and knocked down. Yeah. And still he can't do anything about it, and still he misses with the left hooks. But still he throws his punches as well, Kamal Yafai. His work rate has to be admired, even if the quality of it leaves yeah. a lot to be desired. He's so physically strong as well, and he's power very, very oh, powerful. Oh, another big oh. uppercut from Cunningham. Yafai has managed to withstand that. But that was low. Yep, well, that's 1-1 one, one then, below blows. That's low as well from Yafai. Oh, oh. Another jolting backhand from yeah. Jason Cunningham. We just can't miss him, can he, with that backhand? No, he wants to be using that a lot more often as well. Yeah. That uppercut looked like it landed cleaner than the ones that put him down, and yet Gamal Yafai has managed to withstand that one. Can Yafai force Cunningham to start to unravel? Just heard Eddie Hearn say to Gamal Yafai, you've got to roll the dice now, mate. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, he's absolutely right. This is uh, do really dice time. Two more rounds after oh, this. Wow. What a counter shot they are. Off another awful lead from Yafai as well. 
Well, he's completely got his legs under him here, you find out. Bam, he's got him! I don't know, that was a knockdown, no, it wasn't a knockdown. No, no. no definitely wasn't. Feet tangled, well, a he... punch was thrown Nick, but no, it wasn't it wasn't landed. It was definitely He's hurt here though, he Cunningham. Is yeah, he is. I thought he was hurt on that shot. And he's in a corner and he doesn't want to be there, Cunningham. Here in the tenth round, is there a switch in momentum? Well, you just always fight. got the feeling that your five's power was at some point gonna take over. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you just always got the feeling. Nice, look at that, boxing really well here at the end. Shifty feet work, sharp shots, sliding out of range, brilliant. Uh, yeah, he's ducked under that left hook all night, he has. And yeah. Now he's running to the finish line and he's within, within his right stoop. What a performance. Quite right. Last few seconds, if Gamalia Fai's got anything left, it's got to come wow, out now. And wow. Cunningham just backs away and says, this is all mine. Unbelievable stuff, what a brilliant bout. Who, wow. saw, who saw that performance? Who saw that as the fight of the night? Who saw Gamalia Fai on the floor three times? And who saw Cunningham come up with the win of his career? What, a, what an extraordinary night that's been. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here in Manchester, we go to the judges' scorecards. Mark Lyson, 115-110. Ian John Lewis and John Latham both scored about 114 to 111. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And the new Yeah, it had to be. Those three knockdowns, absolutely crucial. Jason Cunningham is European Super Bantamweight Champion. Yeah, Lerone Richards, the former British and Commonwealth Champion, looking to add the European title to his list of accolades so far. And it is a gap, isn't it? He just picks some really nice shots. The hands are faster. The reflexes are sharper. The movement is quicker. He loves to dig those right hands to the body. De Carolis takes a deep breath after that one and continues his forlorn pursuit. And it is looking forlorn. He just can't pin him down at all, can he? Even when he does pin him there on the ropes, he still can't manage to land anything. No, can't get anything clean off. It's interesting to see how comfortable he is on the back foot as well here, Richards. Uh, so De Carolis has obviously decided, right, got to force this fella back. Let's see if he can operate as a back foot boxer as well. And uh, at the moment, he certainly can. And he yeah. was uh, definitely caught by that backhand there, De Carolis. Yep. Body shot comes in. Yeah. But that's where that's where Colwell will want him to try and step on and, and see yes. what he's made of, go through yeah. the gears. Because he was definitely buzzed by that, De Carolis. You see the body language just change. He's hanging on now. It is so frustrating for him, isn't it, as that right hand gets through to the body again. And Carolis decides it's time to open up, and again, he's still swinging and not really finding anything. He's a big target, Lerone Richards, but Carolis just can't catch him clean. Yeah, the uppercut back in there as well. I mean, you, you know how one-sided it's been, Alex Arthur. I haven't even asked you how you're scoring it. <laughs> I'll, I'll be gobsmacked, uh, Alex. Uh, I think you'd agree with me if, if any of the judges have no, even given a single round no, to the they can't. There's, He's not one around. There's no way. He's not one a minute around. <laughs> There's no. no. And De Carolis, yes, he may be past his best. He's 36. He is no mug. He's been made to look very, very ordinary yeah. tonight. And I have to be, I have to be completely honest. Based on looking at Vincent Feigenmutz's performance against Caleb Plant, uh, and even Tyron Zoiger, of course, was beaten by Rocky Field. And I think he beats both of those very, very comfortably. Yeah. Uh, and both of those guys are still kind of in and yeah. around their prime yeah. too. I think he absolutely bosses those two. Uh, last few seconds of this one. Masterclass stuff from Lerone Richards. It'll flash a defiance right at the end there from Giovanni De Carolis. But this one is over. 
And you don't need the judges to know who's won this one. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds here in Manchester, England, we go to the judges' score totals. Ian John Lewis and Ansi Pettyoki both scored about 120 to 108. Francisco Ayosa Rosa scores about 119 to 109. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And the new European super middleweight champion, Larone. Yeah, Sniper the two boss. shutouts yeah. and a bit of charity from the Spanish judge. Sack that judge, <laughs> let's get him out of there. How dare he give him a round? <laughs> hey, we're we not going to argue. We knew, we knew, didn't we? And again, there are the height stats. Joshua Vazzi, six foot two. I think Daniel De Santos, looking at the head to head, is probably six foot three based on what we've seen this week and, and seen around him. So that's, uh, that's where they are. 172 pounds, Dos Santos. And I'm sure that's one thing Virgil Hunter would have said is don't rush in on this fella because you just don't know what's coming from him. Yeah, well, his approach has been very good so far. Yeah. He done exactly what Chris said at the start. He came right at the centre of the ring and he established his jab right away. Oh, oh he's, he's putting it under some shot, pressure. Three, four, well, he's got him. Five, An early six, knockdown for seven, Dos Santos to eight, deal with, and that is the power that uh, Buatsi does bring. Even if he doesn't land clean, there is so much yeah, power. Very powerful guy. That he can take you down. We'll get another look at that at the end of the round but he knows he can sting him and Dos Santos knows he can be hurt as well he was shaken up and he's still got half of this second round to uh, navigate here as Dos Santos looks to try and avoid the big howitzers here yep it was a long hard straight right hand to the body as well from that's it For me, the, the moment, the leader, the leader of the pack has to be Craig Richards. It was a very, very competitive performance against yeah. Bilbao. Caught with an uppercut there, Boazzi. But responded immediately with a left hand. Thought Richards was terrific a couple of weeks ago. Talked to Peter Sims after that fight and said, just got the feeling with a little bit more self-belief, he could have actually won that fight and he will certainly come again. Here, it's Dos Santos that needs a bit of self-belief. Absolutely. Well, Richards and Boazzi, he's, he's a fantastic fight. Really is, at domestic level. And you'd like to see that before either of the two of them even look to move on up again. Richards didn't disgrace himself at all, as you no, mentioned. Won a, won a few of the later rounds against uh, Dimitri Bivol, and you'd fancy him to be very competitive against somebody like Joe Smith. But you'd also oh. fancy Boazzi to be competitive. He's so, so ferocious. What a brilliant division it is now, the light heavy it division is. in the UK. So good. It is a real kind of murderous row of, uh, of fighters at the top level. And I'd say to all of them, Make your hay now because Canelo's coming. <laughs> oh, what a thought. Canelo's coming. Well, he's not offering an awful lot at the moment, Dos Santos, but he is making Boazzi look a little bit one dimensional and ordinary here. I'm sure some of those British light heavyweights we've been talking about will be saying to themselves at home, oh, I'd have got this fella out of there by now. Oh, oh that, that will be that. Oh. Don't bother counting that. Wow. That's what he does. Absolutely destructive power with that right hand. And he went down in such a manner that you knew that he could be in some distress here. And hopefully Daniel Dos Santos is OK because he took the full force of that and was out before he hit the canvas. This is the stoppage. Just gave him the level change and the feint to the body and then just came through the, with, the, with the right hand to the chin. And honestly, he was out before he hit the floor. Yeah. Absolutely out like a light before he hit the floor. One of the most savage knockouts. Wow. What a punch that was. Do you know, angle-wise, it came in a little bit like with uh, with Pacquiao and Hatton, the way, it, the way it landed on the chin and kind of arced over and through. But uh, for poor Daniel Dos Santos, his ambitions have been curtailed in uh, bludgeoning fashion. Didn't see it at all, did it? It came no. from low and looped no. over the top. Yeah. And Boazzi sold in the eyes to the body too. There was even a little bit with the second follow-up as well. Yeah. yeah. Which, and that, that produced the reaction you can see there from Boazzi because yeah, no the, first one had, the first one had done all the damage, of course, and Victor Lachlan immediately said there's no need to count this 